Hello, I'm Ruben Bressler, and welcome back to the sideboard. And I am joined by Alex Krapel, who brought, uh, well, there's no no two ways about it. He brought curses to the table. Um, and I've been watching some of your games, and they are not only some of the most interesting games, but they've got to be some of the most frustrating for your <laughs> opponents. Like they're just sitting there going, "Yeah, well, I'm going to lose to this." And there's there's very little. Like it, it hits a very specific part of the meta game, which I think is very interesting. So tell us a little bit yeah. about why you decided to play curses today. Um, a lot of people think that I'm crazy whenever I say this, but curses has a very good matchup against both aggro and control, and. I mean, both of the decks just kind of fold whenever the deck's working properly. Um, control will try to just win the game whenever they realize no one's doing anything. And at that point, you just answer their threat and play Curse of Misfortunes, and you just kind of steamroll the game from there. Right, so you've got a full play set of Curse of Misfortunes, yes. which is uh, the, the Curse Tutor. It's, yes. the, it's like the enduring ideal for Curses. Essentially, yes. Um, so you got the full four there, mm -hmm. and you've also got a couple, uh, four singletons. Four singletons. So give me some examples of what the four singletons are best against. Okay, uh, Curse of Death's Hold is essentially a filler curse because you want to hit a critical mass. You want to have enough curses to kill your opponent. Which is weird because Curse of Death's Hold is the best curse in, in general. In general, yes. All of these other cards are essentially horrible. Sure. Except for in their specific <laughs> uses. Right. Um, Curse of Death's Hold is very good against token decks, obviously, if they haven't stuck their intangible virtue. Um, Snapcaster Mage, it completely shuts down Snapcaster. He's just flashback a spell now. With Flash, he's still a good card, right. but he doesn't beat or it's anything It's just a like recoup that. at that point. Um, against other Rakdos key runes, you totally shut him down. I had a, a Grixis matchup, and you just couldn't win without his key runes. And so we've got uh, Curse of Pierced Heart. Yeah. So tell me about Curse of Pierced Heart. Uh, Curse of Pierced Heart, I actually replaced another curse. I can't remember which curse I replaced because sure. most of the curses are subpar. Right. Uh, curse of Pierced Heart is there in case I need another curse. But I've stuck Curse of Pierced Heart turn 2 against control decks, and they've just kind of looked at me and gone down to 15 life yep. from Curse of Pierced Heart. Now, yeah, it not only deals damage to players, but you can also redirect yes. to Planeswalkers, particularly good at keeping, uh, well, it's, it's also good at keeping uh, Planeswalkers off of Ultimate, yes. but it's particularly good against Jinx. Yeah, especially good against Jinx. Um, I don't have creatures, so they'll sometimes plus one, like, I don't know, maybe it'll burn him or something, and I can just ping him back down, so they have to kill Jason they want to be getting their cards. Right. And even if they do, then it's taking another one damage, yes. and they'll never be able to play another one. Essentially, right. yeah. Or they'll only get one use out of the mini factor fiction. Yeah. You've got Curse of Bloodletting. Tell Curse me a little bit about that one. Curse of Bloodletting is a one-sided Furnace of Wrath, and is totally backbreaking in this deck. Um, many games, they'll answer my Curse of Misfortune, and I cast Curse of Bloodletting from my hand and just kill them with Thesnia Bloodhall. Uh, four damage a turn is nothing to sneeze at, and it's really hard to answer lands. Yeah. Not many people are playing Ghost Quarter right now, and nobody's playing Acidic Slime. Yeah. Uh, no, not many Pipe Needles, no, no right. real good answers. I mean, you just sneak right in there, and they match. Stinsy Blood Hall, also very good against Jace, of course. Yes. Uh, also and, very good against Planeswalkers. Right, and Curse of Thirst is your last one. Right. Which is sort of your lord, I guess. He's, yes, it's Lord of the Curses. Lord, lord of the Curses. Of the curses. Um, it's usually the first curse that I tutor for with Curse of Misfortunes. Uh, it just does damage equal to the number of curses on him, or double with Curse of Bloodletting. So usually I go two, I get Curse of Thirst, they take two. Uh, six after I get Curse of Bloodletting, and then I get Curse of the Pierced Heart, and that's twelve because they take two from, from Curse, from of, the Pierced Curse of the Pierced Heart. Heart. And um, I, I saw there were there was a game actually, ten, sorry. that you were you had uh, you had the Curse of Bloodletting in play, you had all your curses in play, and you had Rakdos Key Runes. You're dealing like ninety damage a turn. Yes, because I mean. Uh, Curse of Bloodletting even multiplies damage as your creatures do, right. your non-cursed sources. So, uh, you've got some other, you, you have a wide array of elimination spells. Pretty much yes. everything else in the deck is elimination of some kind or another. Some of these we're a little bit used to. Pillar of Flame, yeah. we're used to. At this point, we're used to Olivia Valderon. Right. From that point on, it gets a little weird. Uh, specifically, I wanted to ask you about your Mizium Mortars, which was getting a lot of hubbub before Return <laughs> of Ravnica came out. Right. It hasn't really been used much. Um, I'm kind of surprised by that, but, it, I mean, whenever you're trying to curve out in most decks, it is hard to overload Museum Order for six, and paying four mana, two mana for four damage is kind of awkward. It can't hit the face, it, it can't do a lot of things that you want Burn to do, but in a deck like this where I don't need to keep tapping out, I don't need to keep playing spells, once I resolve Curse of Misfortunes, my deck is going to win for me, 
I can just sit there and overload Mizzy and Mortars. I can beat and treat the Angels. Um, right, that's a very important factor on that. I can wipe almost any board position in standard other than Sigarda, sure. the Angel of Serenity. Um, it's really hard to have creatures that withstand Mizzy and Mortars right now. It's just a very strong removal spell or board wipe. Yeah, I was hearing you list, uh, You were describing. Someone said, "How does your deck beat Thrag Tusk?" Yes. And your answer was, "I kill both of them." Yeah, you kill both of them because you don't care if you two for right. one yourself. Uh, if you're five for oneing every other time. Essentially, yeah. Uh, Curse of Misfortunes gets me way more value than Thrag Tusk will get my opponent sure. by taking two kill spells. Right. And the five life doesn't really matter because in the long game. Right. You're and, gonna and get Curse of Blood, I'm going to be doing 12 damage a turn sure. if I scale all the way out. Yeah. Five life is nothing. And against control, that pretty much always happens from what I've yes. been, from when I've been walking around watching. It. Yeah, for the most part. So, moving to the sideboard, uh, some of these in the sideboard, I think that we, we all get with, with their four. Slaughter Games has been picking up in popularity a lot yes, recently. It's, it's an excellent sideboard card. I have a whole set. Yeah, I see that. For your, for your specific, what are you specifically scared of for the um, Slaughter Games? Sigarda? Sigarda. It can be anything, though. Um, if I'm in a control matchup, I can just say, Entreat the Angels. Sure. Now they're not going to win the game. Right. I can say Detention Sphere, but also to whenever Neo, you... yeah, whatever yeah, is a problem. Anything that's going to shut me down. Sure. Um, but what I really like about Slaughter Games is I can look through your deck, and because I'm boarding in a whole playset, I can find what I need to Slaughter Games, even sure. if I'm just like, whatever, Syncopate. Yeah. And there have been games where I Slaughter Games Syncopate, and my opponent's like, yeah, you get two of them from my hand, and then I go get two more from their deck. That's, that's pretty nice. That's insane value. Now, the other one I want to point out is uh, Evan Irwin's preview card, which was Desecration Demon, <laughs> because you can tap the card yes. so your opponents don't have to, right? That's why they, <laughs> I think that's why they gave him that card. But So tell me a little bit about why, why you have Desecration Demons. Um, Desecration Demon is just a really good creature to play if you're worried about your opponent's creatures. Um, in some matchups, it's shaky, but you still board a board in. Like against token decks, they still have to lose their own board presence to shut them down, and then once they can't, you're crashing in for a ton. Um, against Angel of Serenity, you stick Desecration Demon after, and they're like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm going to get these cards back, and they aren't good enough either. Right. Um, I guess pretty much every creature deck that isn't isn't zombies. Yeah. Then it gets jump blocked by a grave crawler, which isn't ideal. Well, uh -huh. they, they actually can't jump block. It's flying. Well, no, I'm saying okay, the, they, the they grave crawler gets stacked by. Yeah. It, but um, I'm just, I was sort of shortcutting. Yeah, shortcutting. Um, but yeah, I mean, you like have annihilating fire that been, and pillars of flames, which you probably true. hit them with the grave crawlers because they're yeah. going to cause problems if you don't. True. And it's, it's obviously very good against the white-blue humans decks that have been popping up. Yeah. The white-blue-red tempo deck has been picking up in popularity. Mm -hmm. Very good against yeah. those types of cards. Geist attacks for six, but so does Desecration Demon. Yeah. So, uh, and you've also got Vampire Nighthawk, just in case you need a little bit he's, of... He's just really strong in a lot of matchups. Sure. Um, you can board out uh, removal spells and board in Vampire Nighthawk. Because a lot of the times they see, oh, well, I need to board in all this enchant removal, all this, yeah. like, negation stuff. And so your stuff. opponents are sitting there with Ray of Revelation in hand while yeah. you're beating them down with a demon and, and the night. Yeah, you can even board out all of your curses. That's eight curses. You can board in eight creatures. Yeah. If, if you want to be like that. I mean, if you want to be, if, if you, you think see, that your opponents have yeah, the read. If you see your opponent sideboarding a ton of cards, then you can just be like, okay, I'm going to sideboard a lot too, and end up boarding all your curses out. Nice. And give them a bunch of dead cards. In yeah. So, one last question. When your opponents lose to you, has, has anyone gone curses or something ridiculous like that? Any good curses puns? Usually not. Um, they're, ju they're just sort of <sighs> like dejected. Yeah. Like the, the same reaction they get whenever they realize that Curse of Misfortune is going to beat them. Once it beats them, they they just start, they yeah. play the same thing again. Yeah, just it, like, it just it just puts puts other decks in a sleeper hole. There's just no way out. And it's miserable. Yeah. It really is. Well, this is fantastic. Curse has got a lot of publicity when Innistrad first came out because people thought they might continue. I yeah. really would like for them to come back. I think yeah. that they add an interesting aspect to the game. Um, so if you think that you can dodge Witchbane Orb in your local metagame... No one sideboards it. No that's one, right. No, no one, one has Witchbane Orbs it. anymore. So you, can, uh, you should try this one out. Thank you so much for joining Thank me you. in the sideboard.